Well, good morning. I'm Keith Reynolds, host of Morning Coffee, and as always, we do hot topics in the morning. And this one is a pretty special one uh, for you readers out there. Uh, we have Nikki and her friends Brandon, Chloe, and Zoe are back again for a great adventure. For you followers out there of Dork Diaries, we have Renee, or excuse me, Rachel Renee Russell on uh, via Skype for us. Rachel, welcome to the show. Well, thank you, Keith. I'm happy to, you're having me. Well, Excited to be here. Well, you know what? I, you know, I'm I'm a I'm an okay reader. Uh, with, with with you know, I pick up a few things, but I have to say, uh, I picked this up and I thought it was very fascinating. I read it; it was really really good. Um, so tell me, tell yeah, me, thanks. Tell tell me the importance of you know diversity between you know on children's fiction books. Well, um, I think the best way to describe Dark Diaries um, is if we take a look at the women's gymnastic team. I fell in love with those three girls over the summer, and, of course, they banded together and were able to win the gold medal in gymnastics. Well, if I could take those three girls from the women's gymnastic team and drop them into the Dark Diaries book, that's exactly what we're looking at. Zoe, Chloe, and Nikki look just like the three girls on, on the women's gymnastic team. So we have a very, very diverse team. Um, Okay. So, you know, what is, <laughs> this next question is funny because wh what being a dork, what does a dork mean, uh, you know, basically mean? And, you know, uh, the movement uh, that, you know, you see in the middle, uh, middle school girls. Well, um, basically dork, the, the name dork was derogatory as much like it, depending on the generation you're coming from. Um, there was nerds and, you know, there's been always a word, but again, kind of derogatory that would describe the kids that were kind of shy, kind of quiet, super smart, they got their homework done, um, they, uh, when the teacher asked questions, they, you know, raised their hands, they knew the questions, they basically minded their parents, and they did not always the, you know, coolest, most fashionable dressers. So that's uh, technically the description of the word dork. Um, growing up, my daughters um, were um, very, very tall for their age. Their dad is 6'4", so they inherited wow. his height. And um, when they were in the middle school, they were as tall as a teacher. And by the time they got to high school, they were taller than the varsity basketball players. So they were called wow. giraffes and, you know, teased and, and all of that. But one day, my older daughter just got fed up with it, and she's like, you know what? I'm a dork. I'm proud to be a dork. I'm smart and creative. And I'm different, so a dork is good. So I was able to take that concept of kind of taking a derogatory term and turning it on its head and making it a term of endearment. So my daughters were the inspiration for Dark Diaries, and that word dork, you know, came straight out of their life. Well, you know, it's funny because I really, you know what, um, totally agree. I mean, from my era, you know, mostly boys were the dork, like dorks. and But I think there was... A big percentage of girls in the girl world that were kind of dorky, but it really wasn't, uh, I guess the word wasn't used as much. So, like I said, I, I love the concept of the book, and, and, and you know, it is a different meaning that word dork. Um, so yeah, great. And then what I always, we do um, tours, and we also visit um, schools and that, and I always get a chuckle not only from the students, but from teachers, when I say that, you know, right now they're going to give you a hard time because you're smart and because you're disciplined. But you know what? When you grow up and in 15 years, you're going to be the boss, you know, of most of the very people that, you know, or the personality types that were giving you a hard time because the smart person, the hardworking person, and the disciplined person is going, you know, to be the more successful person in life in the end. So that's always something that, you know, encourages kids as well is to know that what, you know, some of the characteristics that they have now that's called dorky or nerdy or teased or, you know, when they're made fun of, those become very, very positive qualities as an adult. You know what, Rachel, I'm going to take that little snippet of information because I have six kids and that's exactly what I say to them, but they never listen to us parents, right? So I'm going to use you. Yes, and exactly, exactly. And then so I guess they're, you know, reading the books that we are in 36 languages worldwide. So not only is, um, you know, the, the whole, you know, trying to find yourself and, you know, and, and feeling securing yourself, not only is that a story that kids in the United States relate to, all over the world, you know, um, it's the same thing. That's a struggle that kids have. 
So we're in 36 languages. We've sold um, almost 30 million copies of the book. And again, it's just been successful beyond my wildest dreams. Now, do you find, because, because you do that, do you find that, you know, that's why you have characters in different ethnic ethnicities in, in your book? Yes, most definitely. And then, of course, um, it's, it's done in pen and ink, so, you know, we can't always yeah. get, you know, all of the different skin colors and hair textures because we're just working with, um, it's almost as if um, Nikki Maxwell is our main character, and Dork Diaries is her diary, so when you open it, you're going to see lined paper. The fonts we use looks like it's actually handwriting because a lot of people think, oh, is that your handwriting? Or, no, it's actually a font. So when we wow. open her diary, um, she writes her feelings. And then, because she's a talented artist, she'll also, you know, make drawings or cartoons or whatever. So, of course, since we're just, you know, working with a, an ink pen, we can't capture, you know, as much um, what would be considered diversity with, you know, just an ink pen as, as we could as if we were, you know, using oils or, you know, uh, digital coloring. Right. But um, the three characters are very diverse. Yeah, and you know what? I'm holding it up for, for our cameras out here. You know, and that was another thing that I loved about it because, you know, one of the things they seem to take, they've taken away from the school uh, children, uh, you know, is, you know, penmanship and stuff like that. It's not really taught that much. And I love, you know, that's what I taught, was taught how to write on, on this lined type of looking paper. So I really like that about the book as well. Um, yeah, so we, we wanted it to look like a real diary. But when you open it up, she's going to date it. She's going to state where she is, and then she'll talk about, you know, what's going on in her life. And, of course, it's usually like most tweens and teens at that age. Everything is overdramatic. It's either really, really, really good or really, really, really horrible. And, you know, and then there's a lot of humor and whatever. So we, we, we want the diary to feel and look, you know, like a real diary of a 14-year-old. Okay. So, so now um, another thing, you know, you know, through our journey, you know, everybody through their career, they, you know, they have this thing. It's, I always say it's the principle of things and where you're at in life. You know, you were just recently named uh, uh, on the Forbes list for the top five earning uh, children's author. What do you, how do you, how do you feel about that? Oh, that was, that was like, uh, it was surreal. Um, I, I made the Forbes list um, this year. Number one, of course, is J.K. Rowling, and she's the author of Harry Potter. So, you know, I mean, just even being in her shadow, you know, is wonderful. Um, number two was Jeff Kinney, and he is the author of uh, Die of a Wimpy Kid. Number three right. was Dr. Seuss. So I'm in my uh, 50s now, and I've read Dr. Seuss as a child, you know, back when I was in first grade and second grade. So to be on a list, you know, with Dr. Seuss and J.K. Rowling is just, you know, I, I, I haven't framed it, but I really need to, <laughs> to frame that because, again, it's a, it's a once-in-a-lifetime accomplishment. And I had no, I mean, I, I was a full-time attorney at the time that I started the book series, and I thought that, you know, my kids have went off to college, I'm having empty nest syndrome, I'm bored, what am I going to do with this extra time? And I thought, well, I'll just take up a new hobby and I'll just, you know, write a children's book. That's, you know, what I'm going to do. So it started out as just kind of a glorified hobby, and then it turned into a situation where I actually ended up quitting my job as an attorney and becoming a full-time children's author. So I didn't think the book would, you know, grow into much more than a glorified hobby, let alone actually making the Forbes list as one of the best-selling authors in the world, along with J.K. Rowling and Dr. Seuss. So wow. It's just, you know. That's pretty amazing. Uh, beyond my wildest dream. Well, you know, now, this is kind of a family business for you, too, because I believe you and your daughters uh, uh, work on a uh, publication together, a book, correct? Yeah, that is correct. Uh, my older daughter, after she graduated from college, she went into the finance industry. My younger daughter um, was, became a third grade elementary school teacher. And when my publisher wanted to move from publishing one book a year to two books a year, there was no way I could do it by myself. So I thought, what if I could ask my daughters to join me? And sure enough, as long as I agreed to double their salary, which I did, <laughs> they happily joined Team Dork. So now my older daughter is my co-author, and my younger daughter um, is the illustrator now. So the three of us work together. And it makes my life easier, too, because I don't have to try to keep up with all of the latest trends and the latest slang and, you know, what's fashionable and what's not, because with them working with me on a daily basis, they, you know, pretty much 
helps to keep things up to date and you know what the, like for example we use this word frenemy in our dark diaries book 11. i saw that um, it's dark diaries from a not so friendly frenemy well frenemy is the latest slang term when we were young we probably called them backstabbers but <laughs> frenemy it's friend and then enemy and they call it a frenemy and that's the person that smiles in your face and you know stabs you in the back when you turn around so they help to keep you know all that the, the slang and stuff updated for me now Absolutely, and that is right. They were backstabbers back when we were growing up. Now it's, it, it is a little exactly. bit different. Um, you know, so what do you, you know, what do you hope to inspire, you know, some of the young readers that are following you? Um, what, what I the, the the motto of Dork Diaries is always let your inner dark shine through. So it's my hope that kids that are reading Dork Diaries will be able to relate to our main character. And um, our main character's nemesis is Mackenzie Hollister, and she um, is a very popular girl. She's very wealthy, and she has tons of friends, but she's a mean girl, and she's pretty much a bully. So she, at every opportunity, tries to undermine Nikki and just, you know, her goal is to make Nikki's life miserable. And a lot of times kids find themselves in that situation, even as adults. On the job, we find ourselves in a situation where there's either a co-worker or a boss that, for whatever reason, doesn't like us. So by reading Dork Diaries and, you know, seeing how our main character, Nikki Maxwell, is able to cope with her situation um, and she's able to stay positive, and in the end, she outsmarts the mean girl and she comes out on top. And uh, we're hoping that um, children reading the book will see that if they just stay true to themselves, if they continue to be kind people, and if they continue, you know, to um, to to just be good people and obey their parents, that they will, in fact, come on top, come out on top. And that's, you know, the um, the message. Then he went in, dorks win. So awesome. that, that's our, our major goal, and we hope that will inspire kids. And I can't agree with you more. So, Rachel, where can listeners and viewers find this book, uh, Dork Diaries? Yes. Um, you can find Dork Diaries at your local independent bookseller. So whatever bookstores in your neighborhood probably carries it. Um, obviously, uh, Barnes & Nobles, and then, of course, Amazon, Walmart, Target. All, and we're pretty much everywhere, um, especially you know with the holidays coming up. We also um, have a website, and the website is the same as the title, Dork diaries.com you can order books from the website and there's also lots of fun um, activities for kids um, and parents um, to share on our website so if you'd like to immerse yourself in the dork diaries world there's a, nikki maxwell has a blog there's an ask nikki advice column there's um, all of our international books are on there just lots of you know fun games and you can submit artwork and just lots and lots of cool things on our website as well okay now, I do have to sneak in a quick question. One of our uh, listeners out there, Susan from D Delaware, you know, she wanted to know, now this was, this was uh, is this volume 11? This one that we have Oh, um, yes. It's, it's volume, volume 11. It's Dork Diaries. Tell from a not-so-friendly frenemy. Okay. Now, there's other volumes, though, correct? Oh, yes. Well, this is number 11. So we started with book one back in 2009. Okay. And we're at book 11 as of today. So okay. this is, what, seven years later. Okay. We're, you know, um, releasing book 11. And then we also have a new book series that was released in June. And it's kind of a male dork diary. We have a ma male main character, a boy main character. He's 14. And that book series is called The Misadventures of Max Crumbly. So we hope girls and boys will read dork diaries. And we hope girls okay. and boys will read um, The Misadventures of Max Crumbly. But boys were reading dork diaries. But... We thought, well, we're going to give them, you know, a male, a male character that they can, you know, definitely um, relate to as well. So we have Dork Diaries and Max Crumbly, and they're both diary-type books with artwork in them, and they're hilariously funny as well yeah. as, you know, dealing with um, some of the things that, you know, tweens deal with in middle school. Well, I guess I'm kind of dorky because I read it and I really enjoyed it. And Susan, thank you for that question out there. Um, and you can get other volumes out there. So, um Rachel, I would I want to thank you so much for coming on Morning Coffee. And, you know, anytime you want to come back and talk about uh, your your Dork Diaries, please let us know here. Um, for you listeners and viewers out there, please check out all the information that Rachel provided you um, to be able to, to either order, like she said, go to the website. And Rachel, repeat that uh, website one more time for them. 
DorkDiaries.com. And book 11 is Dork Diaries Tales from a Not-So-Friendly Frenemy. Okay. This is number one New York Times bestseller. So check it out. Great Christmas present uh, out there for you viewers. So uh, we're going to be right back with more morning coffee right after this commercial break. When it's time for Jersey Mike's to give a sub some sizzle, this is the way. The way it's always been. The way it always should be. The way it always will be. Because that's just the way it's supposed to be. 